Welcome to another Tiger TV exclusive interview. I'm sports director Bree Andrus, and joined with me is the new man Baton Rouge, new ba head baseball coach Jay Johnson. Coach, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Bree. All right, let's get right into it. So how does it feel to be at LSU and take over a program that's led by some of the greatest baseball coach of all time, like Skip Berkman and Palmineri? It's a tremendous honor and one I don't take lightly. I think uh, when you look at college baseball, the first program you think of is LSU. And so to be here, uh, it's a great honor, uh, one I'm very humbled by and really excited to get to work and continue to build on, on the great work that those two men did. For sure. So have they, like, have you gotten to, like, talk to them and, like, hang out with them and kind of pick their brains a bit and learn about just the culture of LSU and how they built such a great program? Yes, and what drew me here is their excellence, is the work that they put in. And so any wisdom that I can gain from either of them, which is a lot, uh, I'm going to take that and utilize it moving forward. And uh, both Coach Bergman and Coach Maneri have been tremendously helpful in the transition and uh, shows not only what type of coaches they were, but what type of people they are. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. Definitely. So you've had a pretty impressive run at Arizona. You were the Pac-12 Baseball Coach of the Year. You made it to the College World Series last month. You also went to the Championship Series in 2016. You had a really impressive offense, but LSU was no stranger to national championships. So how do you plan to bring some of that fire down to Baton Rouge and help LSU get to another national championship? Yeah, I mean, that's why I came here, is, is to have an opportunity to win national championships. And that's what this program is synonymous for. I think for me, I look at it a little differently, though. Like, talking about that doesn't actually help you get there. What helps you get there is the work that you put in, the process that's in place, improvement on a daily basis, and putting all the players, the staff, in position to be successful. And I think that's where 99% of my time will go, and the output of all of that work will be great results. Definitely. You brought in an entire new coaching staff that, like yourself, has a really impressive uh, record behind them, but you also are returning your entire, the entire starting lineup for 2021. This past season, everyone was saying how young this team was with the freshmen and even the sophomores who hadn't played up to the SEC caliber yet because of the pandemic in 20, uh, 2020. So how do you think that experience on the team will mesh with the new coaching staff? Well, it's a great challenge, and it's something I'm really looking forward to. I mean, being here on a daily basis has been tr tremendous so far. I want to get to the first day of school. So we're in this meeting room. Our players are in the weight room. We're out on the field and individual work. We move into team practice as we get into October and get through that process I was just talking about of building team. And I think as we do that, I think there's a lot of guys that can play better than they did, that can utilize that experience that they got this year and with a little bit of a, a tweak in, in development uh, can really rise to new heights. And I'm really, really excited about sinking our teeth into that and getting going with it. You know, ever since you were announced as head coach, you've been a transfer portal machine. Out of the six transfers that you've had, three of them are from Arizona. So what does it mean to you as a coach to have some of your guys from Arizona want to continue their journey here with you? Well, there's two elements of it. First, could they help our team at LSU? That was the first part of that. And then secondly, it became all about you know recruiting battles. It's like, hey, they're gonna come to LSU or they're going to Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, or Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. And so not only do we want them on our team, we don't want to play against them either. So um, I'm very happy to add those guys and uh, very excited about the shape that they will, will, will fit into the team and it will take and, and the roles that they can use to help elevate us even further. And, um, and I think they'll mesh well with the returning guys. Speaking of that, along with the returning guys and the transfers, I know your roster sits right under 50 right now, and I know you need to narrow that down to about 40 when the time the season comes around. So what do you think that competition is going to be like, and what are you looking for from those guys who want to make that 40-man roster? Well, it's going to be a tremendously competitive fall. I mean, we've made some, some moves. I've had some conversations with players about exactly where we're at and how the fall will look. And what the opportunities will look like. And the fact that there's a lot of guys that just plainly have to make the team. I think one of the benefits when you start with a new coaching staff is everybody gets a fresh start. And with that being said, then you have the NCAA limitations of a 40 man roster next year, which we did not have this year, um, that we'll have to work through. And that's just part of it when you're at a place like this, okay, mm -hmm. that you can go to Omaha, that you can 
win a national championship. It's highly competitive for those spots. Do you think that it'll be even more competitive for those guys because they, you know, some of the returning guys, you know, they've already made their mark here, and it's gonna. Do you think it's gonna be more competitive with because the coaching staff is all brand new? I think so, and like I said, the benefit for all of them is I'm walking into this with an open mind. What anybody did last year anywhere has no bearing on where we're going in, in the future, mm -hmm. other than it's given us a foundation of maybe where to start from mm -hmm. some developmental pieces, but I'm really looking forward to the fall. I'm really looking forward to getting into our process of development and letting the competition of that roster help accelerate all of the players, and whether they make the team or not, everybody will be better for it. So I know since you've been here, you've made it a point to personally reach out and hang out and talk to the guys that are current that are currently on the team. So what does that mean to you as a coach to have a personal relationship with your players and build that um, rapport with them for like trust and just a good relationship with them and all? You hit the word on the head. It's it's trust. I don't have the trust of every player on the team right now, and that's okay. You know that takes time. That takes investment, and so we're going to go to work on that and everything that we do you know the first team meeting might look a little bit different the first day in the weight room might look a little different the first you know skill instruction period for six weeks fall practice and i think over time as they see how our entire coaching staff is invested in their success then i think that will build over time and then that's the goal because what we're trying to do is, is gain that trust so they can develop by the system we have in place so I know the baseball season's kind of far away for right now, but we are going into fall ball when, uh, whenever the fall starts up. So what are you looking for from your guys for fall ball? How are you looking for them to improve in certain areas? And what are you looking to accomplish for the team in fall ball? Yeah, I think there's a couple things. Uh, laying a foundation. And, and again, we want to talk about winning. We want to talk about Omaha. You want to talk about a national championship. But there has to be a foundation of fundamentals, of competitiveness, and a team of, of high character, both on and off the field, for those things to become a reality. So that's the first part, is laying a foundation of, of those three principles. Secondly, it becomes really important for us to get to know the players' strengths and weaknesses so we can help them improve, and you can kind of start to put some pieces of a winning formula together. And then really, for me, the fall is great because it's about development. You know, there's not a win or a loss that goes on the scoreboard the entire fall that counts against you. So moving towards the team we want to be is extremely important. And you're returning, you're known for your um, really pow powerful offense at Arizona and returning guys like Dylan Cruz, Davin, Gavin Dugas, Trey Morgan, who were really, really dominant at the plate. How exciting is that for you and how do you see this offense growing as a whole? I'm very excited about it. And you know, one of the things that I've said is this is LSU. It's a great place. It's a great job in college baseball, the best in my opinion. But the players that were in place, that was another attractive piece of this thing. And with that, I couldn't be more excited to, to take those guys' talent and make it where their skill is even that much better. And, and think about that. That's really exciting to think about. So um, I can't wait. You know, I can't wait to get into individual work with them, be in the cages with them, be on the field with them, and help them improve in, in their process of, of being a better player for LSU and ultimately a major league player someday. And what potential do you see in this team as a whole? Do you think this team next year could possibly build to being a College World Series national championship? You know, I, I don't ever think in those terms, and I know that's crazy for people to think, but for me it's really all about narrowing the focus to what is in front of you. And so right now it's been putting the final pieces of that personnel group together. Then it will go to individual development. Then it will go to laying a foundation for that team. And I'm confident with the talent that we have working through that process with elite buy-in, now you can start talking about doing some things, but there's too many steps in front of us to even like go down that road just yet. Yeah, for sure. So on a more lighthearted note, not really related to baseball, I know you're a West Coast guy, but you've been down here for a little bit. So I have to know, I'm born and raised in Louisiana, I've been an LSU fan my whole life. I have to know, have you tried any Louisiana authentic Cajun food yet? Gumbo, jambalaya, crawfish, anything like that yet? My first day dove right into the alligator thing. Oh, really? So that, Alligator's that's, good. That's probably as aggressive, aggressive as I've gotten. I'll, to be honest, I haven't left this building too much over the first three and a half weeks, so I think the Uber Eats uh, you know, business in town is a little bit, a little yeah. bit up right now. we got to get you some gumbo, I definitely, agree. for Looking sure. forward to that. All right, well, that'll do it for us today. Coach, I really appreciate you sitting down to take time out of your day to talk with us. 
And thank you all so much for watching for a sit-down exclusive interview with head baseball coach Jay Johnson.